Good evening. Sorry for the delay. Um, I'd like to call Monday, May 20th, regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us tonight, to my left, is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right, Tor Nelson, Acting Town Administrator and Select Board Member, and Carla Nuizel. I'm Brad Town, and um, additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, none. Everybody in on the Zoom thing? Yep. Okay. Uh, public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Bell Knapp Road discussion. Uh, we went to a site visit uh, tonight, and that's why we were late getting back. Um, and we have a request, and uh, Tony? Uh, my apologies, the site survey was because of me. Uh, basically, uh, what I requested from the select board is a portion of the road. We, and I'm not going to bore you all with the introduction that they had to deal with me as far as my background and everything, but I'm very, very familiar with Berlin. Uh, I reside in uh, Berrytown, but I own it's pretty close to 60 acres of uh, land up in Ballinap Road. Uh, this is not drawn to scale, okay? But think this is Payne Turnpike South, okay? And this is Belknap Road, all right? Belknap Road is considered a class three road up to the turnaround point. And from that turnaround point, basically it turned into a class four on up to where you go up to Nina's, okay? I pretty much maintain the road in accordance with the statue and everything, and all the way on up through and here. But the, uh, the flood killed us up there. And it was so bad, the culverts here washed out and they ended up taking out all of Belknap Road, which you're fully aware of, and part of Payne Turnpike South. And uh, Tim Davis has been phenomenal, has been assisting me as much as he can, but there's only so much he can do without the select board approval. And one of the things is that they, this was completely washed out. It was that path maybe about two feet, and it looked like you were walking on the moon. And so at that point there, FEMA funds, I believe, came available. I'm not sure how, it, but they put a bunch of crushed rock up there, okay? There's no ditches but it's all crushed rock and it's very, very rough travel in there. And what I'm requesting, at one time, many, many years ago, uh, the town of Berlin used to provide a service where once a year, they would bring the grader up all the way on up here. And in the course of the new statute, uh, not new statute, but the new ordinance, uh, dated in 2016, I believe, Tor, you were part of the select board back then. Brad, I'm not sure if anybody oh, else yeah. what's the, but they basically redid the uh, thing and basically very, very limited services the town has provided. Um, you know, I've been abiding as much as I can, um, you know, but I, I am looking for help from the town for this little section right here. That perhaps uh, we can go up there and put some fill down, grade it, because I don't, ever, I, you know, I don't want to see that happen right now. The way it is, if that was to overflow again, there's no gull gullies. On the, on the site survey, you saw that there's no gullies there. Okay, I'm afraid that that's gonna wash out and we're gonna have the same problem again. Uh, that big culvert there, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure who's responsible when you start getting involved in that. Agency of Natural Resources is so gung-ho about stormwater, water runoff in the state of Vermont, but it seems like they passed the buck to everybody. Um, I tried to, you know, I'm not no lawyer. I'm a retired Marine, retired police officer. Um, I don't, I can dig into statues and so forth, but this is very, very ambiguous as far as when it comes to the orange book. And I, I already talked with the, uh, the town manager and he's fully aware and Brad and you all know when I'm referring to the orange book if you wanna to refer to it. And uh, that's my major issue is right now, okay? I personally have replaced a culvert that basically washed on out approximately here, okay? Uh, and of course, uh, I'm not no street foreman guy or anything like that. I did the best I could with the equipment I had, okay? It serves its purpose now. You know, one of my concerns, would not, not now to be addressed, but I wanted to give you a warning shot on this, okay? There's a major culvert down here, down here is the interstate, and they got that big six foot culvert that pushes water down there. And I've already contacted the state of Vermont, I'm like, hey, who's responsible for that? Because I just can't, logistically, I just can't support replacing that culvert. It is completely rotted out up underneath there. I can do a band-aid fix, which I plan on doing, taking a bunch of rocks, putting it up there, you know, um, and at that point there, but I don't know how long it's gonna be 
And it's like I, you know, and I was telling the uh, the select board members that came on up there for the site survey today. I only wish that the agency and natural resources they came and did a walk approximately six years ago, just raving reviews about our stormwater runoff and everything. I wish they were up there now and see what I'm dealing with. Uh, this flood just opened up all sorts of new veins. I mean, and there's a lot of erosion on the banks and everything. I'm doing the best I can, you know, and you know it's. I think you all would agree that what I've done is it makes it very, very passable from that from the gate on up there. But my biggest concern and my request is for that portion from the turnaround point up to here. And I, one of the questions that was asked was how many residents are up there, okay? You have a taxpayer here, Nina, okay, she lives there. And I'm, I'm concerned, you know, perhaps I'm a little bit selfish, you know, but, you know, can an emergency vehicle get up to her residence in the event of an emergency, okay? Um, Mr. Volpo owns this section here, and he, uh, I believe he has all the permits in place and he's gonna build there, okay? Uh, this here is where uh, uh, Damian Barnett has, and I think he originally wanted to sit there and uh, put up three houses right there, which, you know, I was hoping that would all come through because that would just, because at that point there, they would just turn that all into a class four road I mean, a class three road, but I don't know what the status is. But, you know, right now, you know, I'm concerned about emergency services, you know, getting up to Nina's place, uh, the school, you know, Squires, it's good to go, and all the people down here. So um, the property, you know, as far as uh, I'm referring to Doc Siegel, he used to have the 80 acres there. Uh, so he still, uh, I think he recently sold it to a woman in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and she has no plans on developing it, which is good, because. This is, this is my deer camp, you know. George Estes owns the property here. Um, I have a piece of property right here. And then uh, the Balzanelli, uh, Mr. Balzanelli passed and it's pretty much in the hands of uh, the family. And they, they can't, they really have a hard, tough time deciding on what to do and so forth. And then of course my property here pushes all the way out up to the town of Berlin. And then uh, Tabitha Lord owns this property here. Uh, the help I've been getting is uh, George Esty originally helped me, you know, put in the uh, culvert. Um, Bob Green, who's kind of like taking care of, uh, you know, this uh, this property of Seagull, he's helped me a little bit. Um, these these pe people, like I said, they can't they can't decide. So it's really a lot, a lot of work on me. Um, you know, we I've never posted my land because you know I uh, basically bought this land from my uncle. My uncle actually uh, bought the land. When they were blowing up the interstate and that's when he bought it so it's been in our family for a long time um you know and his, his biggest thing was he didn't want to post it you know and i have not posted my property and we're very very fortunate and people are very respectful when they come up to utilize my you know to hunt and everything so that's in a nutshell didn't mean to ramble on but please any questions i'm here Do you have any idea how uh, how many rod road that is? I don't know, but I think um, I think you know what, what what's a rod exactly? Uh, sixteen feet. Sixteen, 16 feet. and a half feet. Yeah, I want to sit there and say, I, I don't think it's three rods. You know, like now, what, which portion of the road are you talking about? From the turnaround up, from from what I'm seeing up there is that the if you get any more rain the water is going to be funneled right down the road because there's no way for it to get away from it and if you could take and cut into that as you're going down the road on the left if you were to cut into that bank and get it so that you can divide the water to get into the brook and then you know of course you still have to build up the the roadbed but you know to me that would be if if we don't if you if nothing is done there it's just going to wash out Belknap Road again, you know it's it's just the way the land lays. Um, and the other by knowing how many rod it is, then you have an idea how far into that bank you can dig to get the uh, water to divert. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention is I'd like to have Tim go up. And just kind of give us an idea of what it would cost to. Uh, Actually, Tim's on the line. Well, he'll have to go up and just kind of give us an idea. You know, is it three loads of, of stone? Is it uh, two and a half? I mean, you know, what a rough estimate of what it's going to cost us if we go forward with this. Is 
Tim, do you have any ideas? Well, do you think my estimate that if we get another uh, rain event that it's going to wash out that road even worse? It hasn't since July. It made it all the way through the, you know, December and all the other rains that we've had. I mean, that's all. There's quite a bit of dense grade up in there. Um, but, you know, there's not much we can do. There is some ledge that's in there. And... Um, you know, with that bank, I mean, there's a few cutouts on the right hand side going up in that were opened up after the flood, but the left side going up in pretty much runs all the way to that one culvert down toward the bottom and then turns across. Yeah. I think the main part for the reason of July was is that that four footer at Tony's Gate got plugged and it kind of jumped out there and then that it just ran down the road the whole brook came down the road with some of the problems but you know at that point there was all kinds of problems everywhere it wasn't nothing that nobody could really do yeah well i just i was just thinking about being proactive on on that one on that road about getting the water off it you know, I want to make sure the select board know that Tim has been phenomenal in assisting me. Uh, he brought up a bunch of old fill and everything with that, that culvert I was telling you about. But, you know, unfortunately, we had that other rain and it completely washed it out again. So, I mean, Tim, Tim's tim been assisting me, but he told me, he's like, Tony, he said, my hands are tied. You need to go to the select board. So. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Yeah, so the dis distance between the Class 3 road and that culvert. That, that's all I'm looking for. And, and do you know, give an idea what that might be? You're up there. Distance? The distance. I would sit there and say maybe, gee. 50 yards? No, yards? no. Less than that. Tim, what do you think that might be? Between the, where we stop plowing and your gate? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about 300 yards. Uh, it's about the same... Yeah, it's, it's probably that, yeah. So, I mean, that's what, 900 feet? That's a ballpark figure, mm -hmm. sir. Approximate. So that last town resident who lives up there on the left. Uh, here, Nina? Yes. Yeah. Nina Shotho, she's been up there for, I, I I don't know, 34. And I think Nina has came to the select board before in the past looking for assistance on that road as far as like plowing in the winter time. If she had a, somebody in private, I think, that was doing the plowing and the individual ended up going off the road or something during the winter time. That's the, uh, you know, so. But uh, I, I reached out to Nina, but I think she may be, uh, she, I'm not sure why, you know, she didn't return my call. She's usually pretty good with that. But I think she's going to be selling that property to her, uh, her, uh, a very close friend of hers. And he's going to be assuming responsibility on it. Um, but during the winter time, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rough, you know. I mean, the only way I can obviously get up there is with a snowmobile, you know. And, and then that's, that's okay, you know. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but like I said, Mr. Vaughn, he's been permitted. And I think, you know, he's got, he's got power going up there. He, uh, he's got water. And he ended up buying some, um, some of the property here as far as that area up there from, um, I want to sit there and say, uh, Marty Lagestat down at the bottom of the hill. Uh, this portion over here, I believe that's Ron Lyons that owns that. And, uh, you know, Ron obviously lives down on Payne Turnpike South. And, uh, you know, you know, I've talked to Ron, nice enough guy and everything, um, you know, but he just, just, Ron's not going to do anything. And I understand that. And that's okay. You know, I, I took, I took on the, um, I took on the, uh, the objective. Like I said, you know, doing this here, and this is, this has been pretty much maintained very, very well. 
uh, with the exception of that flood, you know, walking out and I got it. And I recently got my excavator up and running. I had to get a new front idle for it. Um, I got a rich man. I got an old 1967 Massey Ferguson. I got a box grader that I use on the back of that. And that's how I've been grading it. And of course, uh, you know, I have guys like that are professionals like Tim and, uh, you know, some people down, uh, you know, in Barrytown and city like, hey, you know, the proper way that you need to grade that road, you got to sit there and you got to put a crown on like that. Well, you know, <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Well, um, so even if that piece of property was developed up above, um, this the one town, yeah, the town wouldn't take anything over unless the road was up to a class three standard. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do know some towns have funds available periodically for class four roads. The town of Berlin doesn't. You know, and uh, you know, and, and I understand there's some exceptions. And you know, like I said, I used to be a police officer in Berlin, and I understand the importance. Um, but Berry Fishing Game Club is a Class Four road that the town maintains there. And you know, I mean, obviously, uh, it's just one of those lines where the lines go. But I'm like, ah, how many people in Berlin is that servicing? You know, it's it's making the Berry Fishing Game Club all sorts of money up there. You know, uh, but I understand that you know that that's kind of a you know professional. Uh, Commitment that the towns uh, sat there, and it's literally in the statute. And I think Torah. I think there was a couple other Class Four roads, correct, that the town takes care of, as far as grading and so forth. Do while well, they do minimal summer maintenance. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just basically make sure the culverts are clear and uh, and graded. Right. And and I understand that. So. Well, I don't think we can do much. No, I think get some numbers. Numbers from Tim on. And then, of course, the other thing would be if they have time or when they'll have time. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't know how to run a mini excavator town, so you don't want me. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Thanks for the yep. Very much appreciated. Okay, thank you. A motion to table this until we get further uh, information. So moved. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Amal, for your service to the country and service uh, to Berlin. Yeah. Thank you. You all have a good day. You Thank too. You too. Okay. Uh, Matt Morris, fence damage on Muzzy Road. Yep, that's me. Yep. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Matt, Anyone for being here. doesn't know me, I'm Matthew Morris. So I've uh, lived in the town my whole life. I've owned this property on Muzzy Road since 1990. Um, I built a house there, and then I built a barn, and then these fences. Um, that was, the fence was built in 1995. So it's definitely not new, but uh, still uh, standing. When were they knocked down, Matt? Uh, I'd say at this point, three to four weeks ago. Okay. Spent some time. A little trouble getting some callbacks, so that kind of prolonged it a little bit. Now, is your fence in the town right away? It is, Brad, yeah, by about uh, six feet. Yes, and the other question is, is the fence being used? Uh, off and on, Brad. Uh, I've been doing some rotational grazing. Gotcha. Um, I started taking the wire off uh, last year because the, the wire uh, was originally barbed wire and it got rusty and brittle. So I started taking some of that down and removing some of the posts that were really bad with the intentions of putting up some electric wire because I have a solar fencer now. Um, so there were some empty um, spaces there between the posts that um, I had removed some of the posts and some of the wire. That's why it looks partly the way it does. Yeah. And the other question is, um, is uh, 
the the damage was done uh, doing the ditch work? It was, yeah, with an excavator. This was the first time that ditch has been done with an excavator. In the past, it's always been kind of sweeped out with the uh, grader because there's not really a lot of water there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see my driveway to the house um, didn't require a culvert at the time. It was uh, Bryce Steigles uh, was the road foreman back then. So there's not a lot of water there anyway. Um, when I built the fence, I spoke with Shirley Fortier. She was a zoning woman at the time. And uh, she said I didn't need the permit because I was replacing it, uh, old agricultural fence. She just said, make sure it's back away from the road. So I did. It was uh, eight feet from the edge of the road at the time. Uh, I don't have any pictures, but uh, it was it was basically just a flat field right up to the road. So it was about eight feet of grass there when I built the fence. Um, so I think that's definitely partly the reason it's lasted so well is because it was back yep. away. Um, the other thing is it's a set post fence, not a driven post. So those require digging the holes and setting a tapered post in. For anyone that doesn't know, those stay put better because the, the end is flared. So the frost can't push them up as easily as a driven post. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more work, but they do last better. And, uh, you know, the my concern isn't like necessarily the posts, but, you know, the all the work involved in replacing them, you know, the digging of the holes. Um, so the fence, I had counted 15 posts that were snapped, and then uh, one gate post that was, I have a gate, gateway there with a cable across, and uh, the dump truck backed over that, and uh, you know pushed the cable tight, and then it snapped that snapped that post. So that's the second time that's happened. Um, I don't mind the guys turning around in my driveway. I've got a, you know, the driveway to the house doesn't have a cable there. Um, so one thing I should mention is the day, the day I drove up and the guys were working, uh, I did have a very pleasant conversation with uh, the gentleman running the excavator. I'm not going to mention his name because he was very polite and cordial. And uh, he said he was having trouble doing the ditch there, and he hadn't intended to hit them. So you know, I didn't push, push him. You know, I was pleasant and cordial back, you know, because he seemed remorseful. So, so we did have a nice conversation about it. Uh, what are you looking at here for, from the town? Well, you know, I haven't really talked to anybody about the town stance because I was having trouble getting a call back. So I don't really know exactly what the town stance is at this point. Um, I did take the liberty to get an estimate on what it costs these days to, to drill and set posts, uh, not, not including the cost of posts, because I'm, I fully understand the posts of, uh, they're not 100%, they're not brand new, so I'm fine supplying the posts, but I did speak with uh, Kay Bellavance, and uh, he said it would be to bore and set posts 
would be about $100 per post these days. Um, so it just to show that you know it is a lot of work to do it that way. Well, um, unfortunately, of course, the posts were in the town right of way. Um, are they done work up there? Are you done work up there, Tim? Yeah, we haven't been there in a couple of weeks. Gotcha. I understand, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so I know, always, I know. That our fence is a lot closer, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I did try, you know, back, back then. And uh, I know the guys are trying to, uh, to do their jobs. Uh, the, I think one of the most disturbing parts is the, cable being backed over twice now. You know, I keep I keep ribbons on it. I try to keep so, at least four four ribbons on it. Yeah Tim. When we dropped the excavator off before we even started that project, that cable was down because we unloaded the excavator exactly right there. And to repair a culvert that had had a hole in it. So the gate wasn't up the day that we started work there. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if something else had backed over it before we got there. And then well, and sometimes, then sometimes when the cable is unhooked, if my dad is up there, the cable's laying on the ground. But I do have pictures of uh, dual wheels backing into there in the mud like right, right over it. Uh, so is the gate also in the town right away? It's one of the posts It is not. That's 25 feet back from the center. The other one is by maybe five or six feet. And this is next to a turnaround? No, it's just my my driveway up into my my property, a separate driveway. Well, unfortunately, I mean, post being in the town right away. Um, I don't think there's going to be a lot that we'll be able to do for you, but I'll be interested in everybody else's thoughts on this. Joe? Well, it, you know, the fact that the posts of Aaron are in the town right away and been there for a good many years. I mean, I guess it's probably a uh, shame on us for allowing it to happen and shame on you for putting it in the town right away or whoever did. You know, I guess that's, uh, and I guess I'm not really sure if unloading that excavator, um, if it what was in the, what was in the way. Maybe maybe if it wasn't a turnaround, we were unloading it in the road, Tim. Yeah, it was unloaded right in the middle of the road. Yeah. So. so. We have to go all the way to the end of Muzzy Road to turn the truck and trailer around. So, my observation was that it looked like when the pitching was being done, the dump truck would drive up the road and then turn around in my driveway and then back up beside the ditch so he could load it in. And then when he was loaded, he'd already be facing out to head down the road. Because I could see where he had turned around there multiple times, and it was, you know, right in that same day or two of the work being done, and it's pretty easy to and see. That's where the gate was. Yeah, yeah, the ditching is right near the the gate slash cable, 
So it seemed pretty obvious to me that uh, since I, you know, I've observed the land for years and years, uh, maybe what was going on there. But no, I didn't. I didn't witness it. But it, it just looked like that's what the tracks were showing. Uh, I didn't speak to the driver of the truck because when I when I saw them, because I hadn't seen that at that point, because I, I went up to my house and then I walked down and I was looking at the post, but I hadn't gone that far down. So I didn't talk to the driver about it that day. But the post, I have a picture of it here, the, with it all pushed back. This is new to me, uh, so I don't know what we typically do. It seems as though there might be, I mean, it sounds like the post, that post potentially was at least backed over. Uh, well, not the post itself, but the cable was oh. backed into. So when the table, the cable gets, you know, a 30,000 pound truck being pushed against it, it gets tight. And then, you know, the post gave way Oh, so, that's not, so if the cable was, but Tim saying the cable wasn't up. Well, they were there multiple days working. Oh. If if Tim had unloaded the machine that day and didn't see the cable up, my dad may have been up there working because it's chained on one side. So when you yeah. unhook it, it drops to the ground flat. So you just drive over it. Well, from the pictures here, also you looks like your posts were at the end of their lifespan. They are, Brad, but I do have pictures of other posts that yeah. right now that I'm using with electric fence. And they're electric fence posts that they sell now is like an yeah. inch and a half around. If you're lucky. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, they're fiberglass. Yeah, or fiberglass. No, so the bottom of these posts have more meat on them than that. Yeah. The top's always rot out because it's end grain. I've, I've been doing. Uh, Woodworking and carpentry my whole life, so I'm very familiar with wood and what it does. And no, they're not pretty. I, I admit that they're not pretty, but they are strong enough to, or they were. And uh, the fact that they're still standing after being hit, you can see they're tipped. Uh, well, in my photos, that sh that alone shows that they had strength to them. Because if they'd been rotten, they would have just falling flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. So they, even now when they're, that they're snapped, you can walk up to it and go like shake it and it, it still doesn't fall to the ground. So it, it, there's still some strength to them. How many posts total? I counted 15, not counting the gate post. I mean, the gate post had been, oh, had been. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. So he's saying that we hit, eight, or we hit 15 posts. 15, yep, yeah, is what I counted. The original, the original complaint was only two. No, and 10. Of those pictures, the, there's 10, to 10, eight inches of material between the ditch and the post. and. I know that they wouldn't have hit purposely or any of them at that many high of a number. Like they would have stopped ditching way before they would have broke 15 posts off. I'm just saying that. Well, when I originally counted them and I spoke with uh, the guys, I had counted 10 uh, because I hadn't walked all the way to the to the end, the very first section, there was five down there, and then the gate post. Uh, they're all still there. Has anybody told you to drive there? No. <clears throat> it was brought to my attention, and I was going to go and view it, but I just didn't have the time. And so I recommended that um, you reach out with Tour and that's most likely why it's on tonight. And I wish that I could have come there personally. Just yeah. there wasn't yeah. an ounce of time yeah. uh, to yeah. allow for it. And um, 
I don't have anything additional to interject than what's been discussed. Um, Any other comments on this? What would the board care to do? I mean, from my point of view, having built miles of fences or mixed the roads, I mean, anything that's, that's in the right of way is, uh, is uh, if it gets hit, it gets hit. And the landowner gets to repair it. Is this something that the insurance company would assist you with, <coughs> Matt? Is that possible? Or have uh, you looked at that avenue? No, I, I haven't because I didn't really know what the town stance was right. going to be. Right. Yeah, I actually was thinking not the same for the town, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any, any, anything like that that's in the, uh, in the town right away yeah. is... is um, I, I get that, but I also realize there, and I respect that, but there's a lot of things in the right of way. There's the utility poles, yep. there's people's mailboxes, there's culverts. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just don't know where. Well, the, 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 um, if you look at the uh, ag regs and everything, you're looking, that's one of the reasons you don't need a permit to put a fence next to a road. As long as it's to contain animals, yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you if if you build it there, though you don't need a permit, you don't get a lot of satisfaction from the town if it gets hit. And I think that's probably about where we are with this. I'm afraid. Uh, Tour. I agree with you, Carla. Some... You have fences along the road. Right. They haven't hit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even think to go to the town for it, but <laughs> mine's like right on the road. Yeah. <clears throat> Joe? I don't have to agree. You know, short of maybe one post for the gate, that's the only thing that I can see that we might be yeah. on the hook for if we even, if we backed into it. Mm -hmm. yeah, but other than that, I, the, the rest of the posts, they, they should be replaced by the town. Well. Same in terms of the conversation that had occurred with the driver and what transpired in that regard. Um, aside from that, and the right away makes it difficult to say yes. I'm sorry, Matt, but yeah. I don't think the town can do much for you on that. Yeah, um, no, that's no, I get it. I, I often wished over the years it was different, <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when so much time and effort and your hard work and everything yeah. that goes into it over a yeah. long period of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get that. And I just ask that, you know, the work be done respectfully from now on because, you know, I, I do want to maintain that fence. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, anything there's... else, Tim? No, I'm all set. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, it is what it is. Yeah. I get it. It's just a fence. It's yeah. not well, life hey, or death. Well, thank you for coming in and bringing your attention. You'll put it back further this time. <laughs> well, probably, yeah, because yeah. there's <laughs> yeah. kind of a ditch here now. Yeah. The only I mean, trouble with that is that the pasture gets eaten down and it's just a salad for the cows on the other side. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you, yeah. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, vast insurance coverage. So I put on your packet uh, an email chain between the Conservation Commission and the VAST. Uh, currently, they require VAST to hold $3 million in coverage per incident, $6 million in aggregate of general liability. Uh, VAST is requesting this to be dropped to one million slash two million, which is in line with their other coverages. Um, I don't see Wendelin online. Um, Do we know the difference in cost? That Usually I the difference in cost for the for that level of insurance is not a lot. Well, also the insurance was I think put in that 
because they were running on the on the town um, property. Uh, there was some worries from the conservation. Is the custom? Nobody's online. Okay. The conservation well, the conservation board, board was worried about uh, damage to the grounds on the up on the uh, trail. And I think that was why that vast took and was willing to go to the, the higher amounts, so that because this is now this is uh, liability insurance, so if anything happened to the ground, it would also be covered. Um, the recommendation it's on the middle yeah. of the second page <clears throat> of the uh, email chain. Uh, dated April 30th, my recommendation would be to stay with the 3 slash 6 million coverage that we initially established with VAST using information provided by Mark Reeves. When we were reviewing the VAST proposal in 2021, there was concern about liability expressed by both the Berlin public and some members of the town staff. The Ridgeline Trail was shared between pedestrians and snowmobiles and has an average grade of 13% for the first mile. The Vermont Trail Design Guide recommends an average grade of 0 to 8 percent with 10 percent or less preferred than any given place for safety reasons. The trail is also uneven and has seepy areas, ice that could be a concern if open with low snow coverage. That makes sense. Well, the thing here is, is that they signed an agreement with the town at uh, 3 at the 3 and 6. Right. And uh, I see no real advantage to changing it. But hello? I believe that we should keep it as is. I'll second. Okay. I think that was a motion. <laughs> I think that was a motion. We have a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor of keeping it as it is? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, appointment of Berlin's delegate to the CV Fiber Board. So, uh, Jerry Diamond. Diamantides. Diamond. Diamond. Diamantides uh, has been on the board for several years and is stepping down at this point. Uh, Jeremy Hansen, who is currently our alternate, has stepped up to retake the post as the delegate. I move to appoint him as the town's delegate. Second. Any further discussion? Any other Should nominees? Be looking for an alternate. Uh, yes, Jeremy is looking for one, but any other help would be appreciated. Yeah, if there's no other nominations, those. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you to Jeremy. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'll write a little note for Brad to sign. That's wonderful. <laughs> him on that. And Jared for his years. Yes. Well, well um, that's what I meant, uh, yes. Jared. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes, to both of them. Yeah. Tremendous amount of effort. Um, okay. Uh, Town Hall asbestos assessment results. So the results are in. I mailed them out on there in your packet. Uh, so there is uh, crystallite asbestos uh, on the floor tiles in the town clerk's office. And then there were transite panels in the ceiling of the boiler room and vermiculite observed in the floor of the boiler room. Um, Basically, their recommendations is that any work that would disturb these areas be remedi remi re whatever, removed um, before that work begins, but no preemptive steps need to be taken. So did they actually drill into the... Did they actually test the walls? That was my question. They did trim the walls, yeah. Because it, it seems like they're just basing it on what they saw and assuming that the... I didn't read the whole report. I only read the summary, so... I'm just trying to see if it... I don't see any testing of the actual... When I look at the materials tested. Yeah, they uh, drilled 
holes all around. Hmm. I don't see it on our list. And they, uh, um, kept a uh, evidence log and evidence bags uh, as detailed okay, or more right. detailed than the police department does. So base, so I'll basically no action at this time on that, just information that. Mm -hmm. But if we do get into renovations, yep. which is the next item on our agenda. It's gonna be expensive. Um, it's gonna be some additional work we'll have to do. <clears throat> now there is the vermiculite. Most of that came from Montana, I think. And there's already remediation funds in place for that uh, that we could tap into. That, but that's just for that one section on the boiler room. Wouldn't cover the town clerk's office. If if we were to do just the boiler room, you would still have the same problems as doing the whole town clerk's office. Well, it'd still be present on the town's clerk's office, right? Yeah, so I mean, if you're going to close down the town clerk's office for some removal, you must as well do it for all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's floor tile in the town clerk's office, and that's different than what we have here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it means you have to make sure they put another coat of wax on it. Mm -hmm. You know, seal it. Anything else on that tour? Uh, no. Um, Berlin Economic Development uh, Building Renovation Funding. So Diane Isabel is online with us from the Economic Development Council. Um, their first task that you gave them uh, about a year ago was looking at uh, Town Hall space needs and everything, and they have engaged uh, Joseph Architects, uh, Joseph Green out of Waterbury, uh, who's studied the town offices and their needs. Um, basically, as, it, as no surprise to everybody, this building is too small for all of the needs. Um, and specifically the police department itself, this entire building is still too small for all the police department needs. Um, so he was giving, given, well, basically two options. Uh, one is to uh, do renovations here at the town hall, uh, looking to move the police department out of this building and using uh, that space for more offices and better meeting space. Um, and then, then the issues were to put the police station. Uh, the first time I looked at was putting it there on the 3.8 acres uh, at the mall um, and potentially looking at building a multi-story building there and putting residential or something on the higher floors. That's not real advantageous to the police department. They don't really like the idea of um, you know, being a 24-hour operation and people getting loud and boisterous and, and stuff. That, that would be a really good idea to have. Residential on top of that. Uh, so the idea was come up to if we could put another story on top of the fire station. Um, so he's proposing 36 hours of work for the, you know, to, to look at some concept plans for here at the town offices, uh, 40 hours for looking at what can be done at the fire station and 54 hours at the uh, 3.8 acres. Um, let's jump in Diane, but at this point we don't really feel that the 3.8 acres is really doable. Uh, so we're looking to have him move ahead with the uh, 76 hours of work for the uh, fire station and shed road. 
which would come to about eleven thousand um, dollars. They've got fifteen hundred dollars in reserves, uh, thirty-five hundred dollars in next year's budget, which gets you about five thousand, and they're looking for you six thousand from the planning commission reserved funds. Has the is planning it, commission weighed in on that? No, but this is probably going to be moved on to the planning commission because um, this, at this point, it's looking to be more of a planning commission project than um, board. The, uh, uh, than, than economic development. That was going to be um, my comment that I didn't absolutely. think this was within the purview of an economic development committee, but um, they were. I didn't think so either, but that's what was tasked I know, of them I when it was first that. developed. I, so understood. I went back to the minutes because I was trying to understand how this 3.8 acre got into play, and it was. Vince basically suggested that they they look, be looking at that site, and so anyway. Um, but I do believe this is more of a planning commission activity, and I think the planning commission should have a say about the money. I concur. Do we have a motion? I'm not sure how that motion goes, uh, that that this be refer referred to the Planning Commission. I don't know. What, what do we Sounds do? Sounds good to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Diane, you just couldn't get away, huh? <laughs> She's probably on mute. Um, <clears throat> new municipal ethics regulations? So, um, I believe it's HH 75 was passed by the legislature, um, which provides for additional ethics regulations and training on municipal. Uh, it, it's a pretty comprehensive bill, um, but of interest to us is ethics training requirements for um, boards and quasi quasi-judicial boards of the town. So we, a select board, will be required to attend training. Uh, more than likely, the DRB yeah. will be required to attend training. It's good. And, and it looks to me like the um, justices of the peace, the BCA, I mean, sorry, B, Board of Abatement, mm -hmm. in their role, would be required to attend this training. It's not required until September of 25. Um, and... Um, there's still a lot of you know work developing the training classes itself um, and everything like that. And I believe it's going to be recurring training every three years after that. So that's another, it's hard enough to find volunteers for the boards and stuff the way it is. So now that's just another step on top of it, uh, you know, in addition to all the conflicts of interest policies and stuff that we're always having to update and, and change due to a, uh, do you think? Do you think the training will be offered to the league, or? I would imagine it probably would be. Um, the the league was very active in opposing this bill. Oh, they were. Uh, but they were they were shot down. But um, since this is going to affect every municipality, um, you know, and and it's, you know, this is a whole mixture of hybrid and online and webinars yeah. and things like that. So it's not like everybody's going to have to go in and. Attend an in-person class. I'll take a look at it. Sounds. And I included the copy of the bill, and you, I oh, emailed you the copy of the bill. Oh, okay. I did not print it out. Okay, I good. think it's like thirty-two pages. Um, <clears throat> but it was in your email uh, last week. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so much for municipal ethics. Um, continuation of VTRAN central garage relocation discussion. So I guess I'll go. Um, <laughs> I did talk to Wayne Lamberton. Um, so my, I, I'm not going to recap the conversation, but I will just say for the benefit, I think Andrea's on the line, that um, he said that with the cost of the land uh, and the, the amount of land that's to be can be developed, housing would be it, it would be pricey. He said that it would probably be four to five thousand dollars to rent a unit there. So he said that that's just not viable at this time. Um, so 
I do want to just address the fact that the zoning, um, I know that the, the government facility is a permitted use. Repair and services, and, and I'm just laying out the what I see in the zoning that I'd like to draw your attention to. I'm not commenting on what you have to comply with and what you don't. But um, the uh, conditional use is the repair and service. So in my mind, it's a conditional use. It's not a permitted use. Um, and secondly, any facility over 16,000 square feet is conditional use. So those are two things that I know that I just want to note from the zoning. In addition to the fact that the state um, re required us to include certain provisions to get the town center designation in the town center district, one of those being that if a if a development in that area where the official map uh, uh, encompasses is not on a does not front a road that a, that a, ro a new street has to be created. Now, again, I don't know to what level you need to comply with those regulations, being the state, but I do believe since their state required us to implement them, that they should be followed. Um, but having said that, I'm a I went to law, you know I'm a lawyer. I went to law school, and my belief in the fundamental rights of property owners over, uh, outweighs my. Um, uh, my my angst over the use, so I would not stand in the way of this project. Well, uh, you know, keep in mind, I think we're overthinking this. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I know I We was. are not telling Wayne what he can I and cannot do with I this know. land. We are not actually telling the state that they can buy or not buy this land, even though I wholeheartedly believe this is a piss poor decision on the part of the state. And yes, they did cut off my filter when they cut off my legs. I think this is an incredible waste of state tax dollars, which is at a premium nowadays, and the fact that they want to put a state-of-the-art garage facility there is beyond comprehension. But beyond saying that, I think the question that comes down to, Mr. Chair, do you think that putting the garage on this parcel is in the best interest of the town? Well, not, not thinking about property rights, not thinking about Wayne or anybody else, is, is putting this state garage there the best interest of the town? Well, my view is that um, if, if the, the cost of the property and the permitting for any other use is going to be too much to be viable, we have to look at what is the highest and best use of the land. And Wayne, I'm sure, has been trying to peddle this for a while. And if he can't find anything or has no other options to sell to this, then I would have to say that this is probably the best use of the land. And having that land developed near the town center is probably a better option than just leaving it weeds and sedges. So we are trying to grow our grand list, right? Mm-hmm. So this would, so we're, in fact, we're taking steps to add one and a half acres to our grand list that we're trying to sell land. This is going to knock 23 acres off our grand list. Gonna, how, is that, how is that growing our grand list, Mr. Chair? It's not 23 acres because only eight of it's developable. But it's taxed at 23 and a half. Yeah, but chances are it's probably in land use anyway, so that's neat here and there. Um, what's going to happen is, is that, yes, we are not going to get the uh, value that you would get with a with another enterprise. However, if you look at the at the uh, probably a five year plan, I would say that there's going to be more development on that land there from the state as far as office space goes, which in turn is going to bring in a lot more people into the into the Berlin Corners uh, retail area. And so, yes, I, I would say that this would event, this is going to take and be a, a, a positive to the town simply from the people coming in and being up here to shop. Do you see my logic there? I can go I'm, over it again. I'm, I'm trying to very hard to not say what I really want to say. <laughs> but... I mean, I'm sure if you were to ask any of the st any of the state uh, buildings and grounds, they are going to be moving 
all of the office space they can off of the lowlands. And well, I, don't, that's, that's, I don't mean just in Montpelier, I mean Waterbury and everywhere else. Well, that's an issue I have, period. The state here again is, you know, a poor steward of the public money. They're, they're constantly spending money moving around. I mean, VTrans, how many times have you moved now? You used to be in, in National Life, and now you're on City Place and some on the Dill Building, and now you're looking to move again. Yeah. I mean, it's just nonstop state offices moving. How, you know, how many state offices have been in the Harry's Building? You know, they come and they go. Each time is, you know, a great expense to the taxpayer dollars, which the state doesn't have. The state's got a huge spending problem. And I think this is just a prime example of that. But you've said what you've said, even though I disagree with you. And I'm, I'm going to say maybe not to res respectfully disagree with you. Um, I think it's just time to move on. Are we going to be friends after this? <laughs> I don't know for I didn't know we were friends beforehand. <laughs> so I understand where you're coming from and I respect that, but I also disagree and um, that's where I stand. So. Joe, as much as I don't I don't think that's the best use of, of the towards the vision of Berlin's vision um, and and in respect to the town center. And when you talk about bringing people in, into the community to, to, to shop and spend money, that's also where some on your, um, your services is, as far as, you know, PD, the fire, the EMS, that also, with any growth, you also have growth there. Well, you always thought- Good thing we got the local option stacks. Yeah, let's <laughs> <laughs> bring that up in round table. But, um, uh, Carla? Well, like I said, I've, I mean, I have spent, I can't tell you how many hours agonizing over this, researching various issues, but I, it comes down to me that I think there are worse options that might be on the horizon based on my conversation. And um, I think that if, if I thought the town for one minute would buy this land, I would absolutely vote differently. But based on the information I have, I, I am going to say I don't know what the what the motion's going to be, but yeah. that we support. I don't support. think we need to make a motion. We just okay. Right off into the okay. sunset. This okay. is just a discussion. So, any any thoughts from the state? Secretary Flynn and Director Law are online. Good evening. Good evening. Well, um, <clears throat> as as far as as thoughts, I mean, like we've said from the beginning. It's it's much nicer to be able to go a place where you you feel that you're, if not welcomed, at least not not <laughs> wanted. <laughs> and you know we are, and I've said this now. This is the third meeting before you, and I said this also in testimony, that you know we are amenable to having conversations about how this would look, um, you know, and including i'll i'll put it out there as far as there's been a lot of conversation about paint turnpike and sidewalks um willing to look at that i mean we we don't want to be a square peg forced into the round hole and you know despised if you will and that's those are not words you all used but uh you know we'd like to be a, a good neighbor um if I may, I would just like to, because this is an open record, I'd like to just at least address one comment. We left National Life because we had a fire. We didn't leave National Life just for the heck of it. There was a fire and three floors were destroyed by water. So we had to leave National Life. And that's how we ended up at Berry City Place. And the agency had been at uh, what is now called Dill previously. And we just took over the rest of that when Capital City Press um, closed. So, uh, you know, events have taken us on the course. And, and then, of course, here we are talking about events that have taken us on the course of talking about Payne Turnpike because of the flooding. So, um, you know, we, we would like to move to this property. We clearly have signed a letter of, of interest um, and... We'd like to work with the town on how it might look 
including my comments last week with respect to the inquiry about a boardwalk or some connection. Um, you know, I, I, I could not commit agency dollars to what the permitting for that might be, but I, I, I can't imagine why we, we wouldn't perhaps welcome something like that skirting the perimeter if you're trying to connect A yeah. to B. I, I mean, <clears throat> because that would just kind of go against everything we're talking about here about, you know, tr trying to turn a bad situation, which was our being flooded out for the umpteenth time into something that's, you know, perhaps in a few years, not quite so electrifying, if you will, for the community. Um, so I, I, I'm happy to answer questions, but I don't necessarily know what other statements I would make other than I appreciate the time you've all taken on this topic. <clears throat> well, the, 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 um, uh, the, the town center has always been near and dear to a lot of hearts here, but uh, as I said, um, I don't think you're going to get a, you're not going to get a, a open arms policy, but you're at least they're not going to try to take and throw you out. Uh, I think it's important what it turns into. I mean, I, I think the conversations are important. The future conversations are important. And I, um, I mean, it's unfortunate that the, that, that land is so full of wetland, uh, acreage, but, uh, the reality is that it is so. It is limited in what can happen there. You know, financially, that's viable. So. Any other comments? Other than thank you for your time and um, I, I guess. Uh, may I, may I uh, is this the, the, is that the secretary? Yes. This is a little tight. Hello. Uh, Hello sir. I would just ask if you do end up going here, perhaps really consider you know, the visuals, what are we seeing when we go down Payne Turnpike? Yeah. You know, right. are we seeing a bunch of rusty old gnarly orange trucks or maybe a row of bushes, trees, something? Yeah. Think about that yeah. if you would, please. And yeah. thanks for the other uh, great work you do out there. I'm a, a professional driver and I am very proud of our agency of transportation and that's no BS. So thank you. Well, thank you, sir. We'll pass that on to all the garages and uh, we, we would want this to look as as good as it could and i and i think with the garage operation envisioned on the lower portion there's ways to screen that um yeah. to your point and well you you haven't met anything yet until you meet polly on our development review board she will she will take yeah, your landscaping yeah <laughs> Okay, well, anything else Thank on you. this? Thanks for, for showing up three times. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you all. So I, may I just ask the next sure. steps? Would, would we get with you tour? Uh, what, just to understand, you know, how we engage with the town on some of the more specific details of what? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds good. All right. All right. Thank all you right. all very much for sure. your time Thank and your you. service. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Um, Vermont Route 12 Riverton Trust Bridge. So, if you remember about a little over a year ago, uh, well, uh, well, let me back even further. So, um, the Route 12 Trust Bridge there in Riverton is slated to be reconstructed in, I think it's 2016, 2026. Um, and there's been discussions with us on, you know, if we wanted sidewalks along there and, and all sorts of things like that. Um, but about a year ago, they also approached us with if we as the town wanted the old bridge. Um, because it is a historical I don't want to say artifact, but uh, structure. structure. Um, and there was some thoughts back then about crossing Dog River to access a parcel of town land, and that was basically deemed not doable. Cost prohibitive. Um, yeah, but we never did close out the process with the, the state um, if we wanted this bridge or not. Um, so, you know, basically it would be up to us to uh, 
move it, reassemble it, uh, paint it, do any repairs to it, um, remove the lead paint, if any, up to the cost of what it would cost the state to demolish the structure. Um, so looking at the timeline, you know, we're still talking, you know, two years down the road, if not longer. Um, I, I think we should be best to tell the state we appreciate it, but uh, we're not in a position to take them up on this offer at this time. We don't want it. No. Okay. no. I don't want it. <laughs> it is cost much, prohibitive. There's too much structure problems with that. Absolutely. Average. So I'll make that a motion. You have a second? Second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Juneteenth holiday observation. So I've been approached by town staff and the police department that if we were going to offer the Juneteenth holiday as a as a town holiday, um, it's not a state holiday. It's not a. I think it is. I thought so. Or I think it's a federal. I know it's a federal holiday. I don't know if it's a state holiday. I don't think it's a federal holiday either. Cause I think it is. It's recognized, but it's not. I don't think anybody gets it off. It's. I know when I was with the feds, it was. Um, but so the question is, do we want to offer it to the town employees? Now there is a Berlin connection to this. The have you ever heard of the Lemon case from no. New York? Maybe when I was in law school, but I've long forgotten. No, <laughs> it is a, um, I guess, a groundbreaking um, abolitionist case from from New York State. Hmm. It is uh, a federal holiday. Decided by a Justice Payne, a relative of Payne Turnpike Payne's. So there is a Berlin connection there, but I don't know if everybody knew that or not. Cool. Am I stretching things, Brad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, the only thing I can say is is that, one, I don't believe it's recognized by the contract with the police department. It's not there. So that's why they were asking that if the town employees got it off, they would want it off, too. No. I, no? Not, not feeling uh, That's just my opinion. I'm more than willing to entertain a motion. It's either up or down. If it was a state holiday, I might consider it, but it's I'm not in favor. Juneteenth is a Vermont public holiday. According to Google, and Google's never wrong. It's got Bennington Battle Day on there, so you know it's fairly up to date. Does the state take off Bennington Battle Day? They yes, do. we do. Even though the bat was there, <laughs> even though the bat, oh, you didn't know that? No. It was in Hoosick, New York. Yeah, it was. But Vermont gets it off. August 16th. <laughs> <laughs> even though it's a general. I wonder who she's got an employee. <laughs> He's got a pencil in on her calendar. It was my boss's birthday, so I never <laughs> forgot the two things. I always remember because when I worked at UVM, I would be annoyed because we had state employees that worked in our building and that would have it off, and we didn't have it you off. You didn't have it off. <laughs> <laughs> now that I work for the state, I think it's great. <laughs> um, it says it's a federal legal holiday uh, in some states, but very few. Illinois, Washington, D.C. are listed, but very few give it as a paid holiday. Again, I, I've also been reminded that we or you signed a declaration of inclusion some time ago. It was before my time on the select board, but mm -hmm. I've been reminded of that. That is true. I think those are two separate issues mm -hmm. in my and, mind. Well, I, I'm just trying to, to, to fathom why, why the uh, inclusion <coughs> would be anything to do with Juneteenth. Well, that was the start of, of it. <laughs> Again. So I know when the state wants to add, they usually give something up. You know, we, we, we have President's Day off now, and actually Martin Luther King 
day off, but we gave up Columbus Washington. Day. Columbus yeah, day. I mean, we gave up stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I'm all about that it. That was my re first reaction. That if you want a new holiday, I take back two. Well, that didn't seem to satisfy <laughs> them either. The, another thought on the inclusion thing, me signing that, that was the board who decided to have me sign it. <laughs> and that's what I mean. I was not part of the board yeah. at that time. So that's why I said you. Yeah. Well, um, let's get a motion here, and then we'll have a discussion on it if you want. But... Um, I make the motion not to add Juneteenth holiday observation as discussed this evening a as town a hall. town holiday. I'll second. Any more discussion? Close. How many how many uh, yeah. holidays does the um, town employees got? At present. Uh, I believe it's ten. The normal ones, and they get the day after Thanksgiving also. Mm -hmm. They get 10 holidays plus that one? Or is that part, part of the tap? That's part of the tap. Okay. So, any other thoughts on this? No, nothing else. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Kuwa's Trail property sale? So there's been some interest in the Kuwa's Trail property uh, as a private sale, so I'll have more on that in executive session. Did we get the soil test back from that? Yes. Well, the Level one, is that what they call it? Environmental? She came back up from there. Okay. Um, so that'll be executive session. Okay. Uh, license permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24 25 for payroll from May 5th, 2024 to May 18th, 2024 to be paid on May 22nd, 2024 in the amount of $70,214.23 and payable warrant 24G25 with check number 23936 to 23980 in the amount of $102,040.63. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Uh, motion carries. <coughs> Okay, uh, approval of minutes from uh, April 15th. Uh, Kelly emailed these out late this afternoon. I don't know if any of your buddies had a chance to look at them yet, so maybe should hold off on those. Uh, motion to table. To make the motion to table the April 15th minutes as well as the May 6th minutes. Section no. Yep. Until we have time to review them. Are we going to do the May 14th? We can do the 14th. Yep. And, uh, okay, I'll second. We have to have a motion on it first. She didn't, she I did. Oh, yeah, okay. Did. <laughs> Missed it. No worries. Uh, um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, you do have the May 14th, which was the special meeting last week, uh, emailed out to you in, in your packets. I make a motion that we approve the Tuesday, May 14th, 2024 minutes, and just adding in the M to Nuiza <laughs> Move. say that. <laughs> and also just capitalizing the T in all the VTRANS and a period after motion died for lack of a second. And I'll just present that to Tor so he has those. I'll second. Uh, any other discussion on that? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table. Uh, Joe. Uh, I'm good. Flo? The only thing that I would mention in round table is um, 
just that uh, we need to look at the uh, the website in terms of our notification for the meetings because a few people have commented and I believe it's on our website it's just not in a particular location where they're used to going so maybe we can get it in both places I think it's there it's just not in both places so when they're out looking in one particular location they're not seeing it there and I can't say more than that because I haven't had time to go look. Okay. Is it but. possible to have, is there an events thing on like on the main page that the, those can be linked to? Or? That's a good point. Because I, I, I admit I find it frustrating to find things on our website sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, <clears throat> making it as easy as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it, that would encourage more, you know, we want to encourage participation and I think make, making it readily available is important. Sounds great. Thank you. Door. Uh, we received our good news for once. We received our health insurance rates for next Ooh. fiscal year. Anybody want to take a guess of the increase? Zero you percent. You said it was good news. Nine. Fourteen. <laughs> colder, colder. Zero. Too cold. <laughs> it's about four percent. Oh, that was That's my next guess. We, we budgeted ten. So I was very pleased oh, that's to get good. those okay. results. Okay. So. Anything else? That's all I had. That's great. Nothing. Any I've other, said enough. Any other update on Lover's Lane? Has there been any more information? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we have executive session. We do. I move to make a specific finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the town of Berlin at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Here. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're in executive session. Oh, not yet. Nope. Uh, then I move to enter executive session to address contracts under 1 VSA 313A1A and real estate under 1 VSA 313A2. Second. Any comments? Those in favor? Aye. 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 We are now in executive session. <clears throat>